Hey, 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 what is going on, ROK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are back again continuing our Jumper Project kind of full build walkthrough series. And in the first episode, we started off talking about the importance, right, of doing a Jumper Project. Why would you do one? What, you know, some talking about a little bit of what goes into it on a uh, overview level. And today we're going to be really be expanding on that, right? We're really going to talk about what are things that you absolutely need to have set in stone before you actually, one, kind of start putting your Discord together, you start before you even start recruiting, and really go over what I feel are the most important things that are going to reduce the most amount of challenges, hurdles, it's going to lower your margin of error when you're looking to try and increase your odds and chances of having a successful jump project. Before we get started, as always, make sure you guys sub, like, ring that notification bell, and of course, if you want to join and be a part of our Discord, you can find a link to that in the pinned comment slash description down below. All right, so what are the most important things that you as a player need to know before you decide if you are someone who wants to start a jump project first and foremost and i cannot stress this enough i truly believe that you need to have a, a minimum level of knowledge and experience when it comes to playing in my opinion multiple kingdoms and this can be done a few different ways Right, I do think it's important to at least at minimum have a main kingdom that you've started playing in from day one and you've been there, I would say at least through two to three KVKs, right, would be my bare minimum recommendation because you need, you need a starting point, right, you need a baseline to build from. And then beyond that, what is really important for you to do is either make new accounts in other groups like a good example would be either go and join another jump project go through the process with them and then play that account out for a little while just to see how a new kingdom develops also so you can get some knowledge and experience on how another project has been operated because that will allow for you to get another level of a baseline amount of knowledge and experience by being an active and participating member of an actual jump project if you've never done it before. Why? It doesn't matter if the project succeeds, if it fails, however you really want to label it. The important thing is that you are getting experience and you're gaining knowledge in what the process is and the journey and then how it has played out in addition to also getting double dipping on the experience of playing in a server from day one. It is gonna allow for you to really figure out the most important things, which at least up until today, right, is sometimes hard to, to gauge, I would say from the majority of the player base, which is that really looking at things like player trends, right? Uh, player psychology. Why do things happen the way they do when we start off playing in kingdoms? Um, an example of this, right, would be <clears throat> if I'm in zone one, right? Why is it, you know, why is it that certain uh, provinces, right? Certain zone one provinces are more sought after than others. Why is it that certain alliances are able to get a head start over others? How are alliances able to recruit and bring players into their alliances faster and earlier than others? What are the benefits that we see from alliances that are able to start the moment that the server opens compared to maybe alliances that start five to six, eight or nine, 10 hours after a server opens, right? Paying attention to these trends, right? Why do alliances build um, in certain ways, right? As far as why do they flag out um, in certain directions, right? Why would they start building their um, center fortress, right? In a specific area, that is going to give them an optimal uh, positioning to then branch out, right? Why do they pick certain areas, uh, right? Wh what do they prioritize on flagging first, right? Why do some players uh, possibly hop alliances, right, from one to another early on, right? Are they trying to climb the ladder, right? What are these types of trends that we're noticing? All of these things are very important to learn, if you want to be someone who starts up a jump project, because remember, if you start a jump project, 
you are essentially someone who is viewed and looked at right publicly from people that are joining because remember a project has to start somewhere and usually it starts with one person and one idea right or a vision if you will that you have and then from that point that's when you start recruiting players you start you know trying to fill out leader positions officer positions but usually the person who is starting it right and maybe it's one person maybe it's a group of people but the individual slash individuals individuals i feel like i said that at the same time twice <laughs> right those are either the individual or sorry either the one person or multiple people that are engaged in that foundation right from building that project out doing the recruitment bringing people in filling out the needed and necessary positions that you need to fill but these again the the individual or multiple people are viewed as right the leaders if you will right because like i said it has to start from somewhere and you have to bring people on initially and most of the time you're probably going to have early roles in your server as well so these are just going to be indicators and it's important that you have a good baseline level of knowledge and experience so you can set those standards you can set those precedents early and so beyond just playing your own main account beyond playing in a jumper and getting that experience playing in an early in an early kingdom having at least a few accounts that you play in different kingdoms even if you're just making the account to check in on a daily basis to see how things are progressing right maybe you read up on world maybe you read up on the world chat a little bit where you'll go or sorry kingdom chat in this case right you'll, you'll read up on kingdom chat just kind of see what people are posting you know what are they talking about um, you know maybe you play there long enough so you can read king's mails right i think that's another very important thing that if you're able to play in servers for a while you can actually read king's mails and kind of see what these servers are posting about i think it's very important that players who are looking to make projects have multiple accounts in servers that they just check in on you know even if it's once a week once every two weeks because reading things like king's mails are very important if you want to get an idea on how you will manage your server in kingdom looking at some standards and expectations that are set from how other kingdoms are managing their players how are they informing them how are they educating what are they doing what are they not doing um, enough or maybe or maybe areas of improvement that they can do all of these things are very important if you as someone want to start your own jump project it is so much more than just getting a few friends together and saying hey guys let's start up a jump project you 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 have to keep in mind you are managing people right you are essentially a, a manager of humans right and you are really in charge of doing everything right when you start your project you have to recruit you have to set policies you have to establish how you're going to manage events i mean these are all things that are very important right you have to let people know how are you going to govern what is your hierarchy going to be right who's going to be at the top how are you going to set that up who's you know what what's your line of communication who's in charge who's making decisions um how, how you know what are the standards you're setting for your officer team what's the standards you're setting for your leaders right how are you planning for them to interact how are discussions things like feedback voting if you're doing that how are all of these things happening um right then you have to think about right managing events right how are you going to manage things like your mges um, how are you going to manage any of your other server-wide events, such as like general kill events, right? Or even if it's just your MGs in general, right? Outside of any other events, how are you managing server-wide events, right? And and then one, how are you going to make sure that you're communicating all of that? Who's going to write the mails up, right? These are other things you have to consider, right? Is who's going to be in charge of writing your mails, writing templates, uh, distributing that information, right? Are you going to have multiple people on your mail team? Trust me when I say informing and educating your player base is going to be the most challenging part of you starting a project up. It doesn't matter if you're just doing it from one alliance, two alliances, or upwards of six to 12 alliances, right? Myself, right, I've had 12 to 15 alliances starting out in, certain, in kingdoms before for um, two of the biggest projects that I ran where we had about 450 players that converted with us to Final Kingdom. It is literally almost like another full-time job, right? 
and it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of passion. It takes a lot of effort, um, and it takes a lot of just diligence to make sure you're staying on top of it. Um, and so these are important things, right? In addition to how many alliances do you want to have, right? How many players per alliance do you want to have, um, right? Are you looking to be the strongest alliance or the strongest group? Uh, are you looking just to be a contributor, right? Um, or do you want to be a coordinator, right? Meaning that are you okay going in with one alliance or multiple alliances and you just want to contribute to whoever the kind of leading regime is going to be when you go into a kingdom? Or do you actually want to be the coordinator, right? Do you want to be that kind of leading regime that is going to kind of set what those standards are going to be, what those policies are going to be, how you're going to manage events and et cetera. And then I think the other thing to keep in mind, this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, right, is please do not underestimate the value of gaining knowledge, right, and gaining experience, right? If, if you've only been playing Kingdom Builders, and specifically in this case Rise of Kingdoms, for a, a small amount of time, right, I would say, you know, maybe less than six months in one kingdom, you, again, if you're not someone who's really gone out there to do research beyond the limited experience that you have at the moment, which is just from your one kingdom, right? The biggest thing I will, I will give you as a pro tip is do not assume that your home kingdom is the way that every other kingdom is managed, that uh, for uh, how every other kingdom will play out from day one. Maybe you got lucky and you don't have any rogues, right? Other kingdoms might have a bunch of rogues. There are so many different ways that a kingdom can develop and how the history can play out in a kingdom from day one up until when migration opens or even just after a couple KVKs. That is why it's important to see these trends for what they are so you can be better prepared when you decide to make your jump project. The other, the other thing I'll say that is loosely connected is just don't go in head first. Right, be open-minded. Um, this is why I think it's important to get a baseline level of knowledge and experience and an understanding for how these things go. Because remember, when you are making a jump project, you essentially are looking to govern people. Right, you you are here to manage a group, and because of that, you're not just managing an alliance. Right, this is why it's it's very difficult at times for players who are leading alliances and also are trying to lead and manage a jump project, right? Leading an alliance is completely different than leading multiple alliances in a kingdom. The, the mindset and the approach is different, right? When you are leading an alliance, you are literally first and foremost there to care, to manage, and to put forth an effort for the players that are in your alliance. When you are managing a kingdom, and I'm just giving like a very TLDR version here, when you are managing a kingdom or multiple alliances, you have to think about and take into consideration all the alliances. It's not just about your alliance anymore. It's about how are you going to make decisions and follow a belief, follow a direction that is in the best interest of your group, right? Not just your alliance or this alliance or that alliance, but the group as a whole, the collective, right? Right? And this is something that I think is very important to really solidify that distinction because I cannot tell you how many projects I have seen play out where people that are in those projects sometimes will care more about what their alliance is getting out of something rather than how is the group benefiting in the kingdom. And then other times where some people feel like they have the best intentions, but they just kind of come off passively, if not indirectly, as not really being pro-group, but being more pro-alliance. Um, and those two are somewhat semi-loosely connected. So it, it is just important to understand that there's a big difference. And the only way that you're going to get any experience in doing this, right, is to, of course, do it, but to go in with at least a level of preparation and understanding before you do. So that way you have realistic expectations before you decide to start a jump project. Because it is a lot more work than you think it will be. I can guarantee you that. And you're going to need a really good team around you to support and more importantly sustain your vision right, going into the long run. Early on, it's pretty easy to figure most of these things out. 
that you're going to need to figure out. But once you start doing the recruitment, once you start bringing people into the Discord, once you start figuring out uh, things, for example, like placing op- um, uh, recruiting and, and placing officers into alliances, finding leads, and then you kind of start getting to that jump phase. First, yeah, oh my gosh. Right, that is when you are really going to need um, a team to really kind of help spread out your workload. Right. So you're not necessarily taking on so many things because in the beginning, there's probably going to be this passionate high, right? This adrenaline that you are excited with, especially if it's your first project, right? Someone like myself, I've done seven projects, right? Between two games. And, you know, usually I've never had less than five to six alliances that I've gone in with. And it, it is important to just really have a good kind of multitasking. And a really good delegation, right, of tasks, assignments, because you don't want to burn yourself out, um, right? No, no matter how well you may be able to do it, right? It's all about working smarter, not harder. Uh, with that being said, right, that is probably going to round out this video for the next step in our jumper phase, which again is basically figuring out your vision, right? Getting all of your ducks in a row before you actually start recruiting people to your Discord and answering a lot of these important questions before you get to that point. In the next video, we're going to be talking about how to set up your Discord, everything you're going to want to have, the the kind of reasons why, pros and cons of having certain channels set up, kind of certain do's and don'ts that we're going to talk about um, from potentially examples from other Discords that we'll use um, just as some reference points. And then I believe the next video we'll talk about is kind of how to go about recruiting players, bringing them in. Uh, But again, that'll be our next video, and I hope you guys look forward to that. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video when it comes to how are you going to start out with making your jump project. Are these some things that maybe you didn't think about, but you are now thinking about because of watching this, right? And I just would love to hear any general thoughts as well on, I guess, part two of our how to create your jumper project series. With that being said, that is it for me. Until next time, we will catch y'all later.